they just confirmed everybody is out the games. Oh my god, they just got a teaser out of the first ever female protagonist in a Gundam series. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, so yeah, I'm really hyped for that now. I almost uh, over whatever sickness I had. I was feeling pretty dead, like, uh, yeah, until yesterday afternoon, I tell you what, but like, woo! Oh my god, I got up for that, I'm feeling so good, and that just got it out, so I'm super, super, super happy. Oh my god. <laughs> woo! Right, so anyway, root to do do double. Last time. Yup! <laughs> Last time, Natsuhiko went off on his mother for just being neglectful and everything and, like, spending too much time on the project. And he even mentioned to her about Yori. And uh, she didn't really talk too much about that. Which leads me to believe that maybe, like, she knows about the experiments, right? Maybe she's experimenting on Yuri, like, and feeling guilty about it. Or so, like, I don't know. So... Again, this is all going back to if that theory is true. It's it's like a 30 second teaser, so I'll totally wait for y'all to check it out, but... Hello, Mr. Valdek! Welcome to the stream. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm too excited! <laughs> Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! And the Gundam looks pretty schnazzy too. Not not as cool as uh what do we call it? Exia. Exia is probably my favorite modern uh starting Gundam, but the air it's called the Aerial Gundam looks looks pretty cool. I'll definitely pick up that master grade. Uh seriously. Ooh, it's been a long time since I've built some gunpla. Anyway, back to root double. Uh that theory I'm gonna look pretty fucking stupid if that theory's wrong, but it just feels like something really cool that they would do, you know? And it would explain Yuri's whole disappearing act and shit. And like, if she was like projecting herself into people's minds. And, uh, so from his mother's perspective, she would either, she would probably think that he was being delusional or something. I don't know, but... Unless she's, yeah, she might, because she's hardly ever home, so she wouldn't really interact with Natsuhiko, uh, you know, about Yuri and such. And he says, like, oh, hello, mum, Yuri's living here, blah, 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 blah. And, like, uh, if he does that, she might just think he's, uh, whatchamacallit. Being, just missing her trying to make her look guilty and like <laughs> no but I'm gonna look really fucking dumb if this uh, if this isn't true and it's probably not because again Mashiro interacted with her but you know then again to counter that she could be she knew Mashiro so she could be sending herself into Mashiro's mind as well and uh I do notice that uh, Sal, you never directly talked to her. So, anyway, root double, root double, root fucking double. Kick ass visual novel. Uh, let's get back into it. After a little while, they arrived at the school. Yeah, they're gonna go talk to Anna. Uh, try to get her on their sides. So, and I think they do because, you know, they were in route A, like she was on their side, like nationwide. And the gate was open even though it's a Sunday. Perhaps the legend teacher is looking to get work done on the day off. Or do allow students to use the facilities for club activities. Oh yeah, and they rented out this cab for like a hundred bucks or something, like a thousand bucks. Hello, Devon Fiegel and Eblis. Welcome to the stream. You thought it would be tomorrow, but it's Tuesday, isn't it? That's the usual stream day, right? I'm not, I'm not imagining things, am I? I've also been playing a ton of Elden Ring lately. I beat Godric the Graf did recently and some other little bonus bosses. My very first Souls game. Pretty intense. But I love Rani the Witch. She's so cute. <laughs> anyway. 
Mr. Driver, please go to the staff entrance out the rear. You're going to Gladly. The, dri <laughs> the driver moved the car in accordance with Natsuko's directions. Just going to take a shortcut through the black void. Oh, God. And then the kids got off the taxi at the staff entrance. Mr. Driver, please wait here. We'll be back later. Remember, we paid you a small fortune. Well, you are written for the day. Of course I'll wait. And with that voice at their backs, they entered the school. It was the same familiar school they attended, but they made sure to be as cautious as thieves. As they got inside, Salyu muttered, Let's find Anna quick and... Hold up, Salyu. Natsuko quickly stopped Salyu. Oh, oh, what's wrong? Listen carefully. I can hear something from over there. Natsuko pointed to the corner of the ceiling as he spoke. And there... Of course, the school has security cameras. He could hear the servo motors of a surveillance camera. There's a camera inside here, too. You think the school wouldn't have security? The school's furnished with surveillance cameras to prevent intrusion by suspicious characters. Though, they left Mr. Ukita in, so who knows how effective they are. Natsuko normally paid them no heed. Because if they let, he let their presence get to him every day, he'd never be able to stay calm. Then we can't go to the staff room. Yes, but if we can find a dead spot and if we crouch while walking, then they won't notice us. As Nazi go began to speak, Masha placed a finger to her temple. Hold on, guys. I'm contacting Miss Anna through telepathy. Chase Louise, I gotta do everything here. Miss Miss Anna, this is an emergency. It's me, Marshall Rotoba. Yes, I know. I could. Uh, that voice is very unique. If you're at school, please come to the come to the staff entrance. Thank you. It's more reliable to do this than try to move around. I see. So then let's wait here. And thus they waited for a while after Master sent her telepathy. And eventually Anna appeared. Miss Tova? Mr. Tengawa and Miss Sanomiya, too! Oh, Miss Anna, I'm so glad you're here! Oh my god, you will not believe the last two days we've had! What's happening with you three? You come here on Sunday with an emergency! Oh, it's a long story. Can we talk about it some more without surveillance cameras? Anna watched Natsuko's tensed entreaty with a serious look on her face. It sounds like a desperate situation, huh? The BC room is right over there. It doesn't have any security cameras. We can talk in there. God, that is that skirt must be is so tight. It's ridiculous. Poor Anna. It's like cutting off her circulation. Jeez. <laughs> he slipped stealthily into the BC room. Anna stood at her podium as usual and spoke up. Now, let's hear it. You three have been acting strangely since yesterday. What on earth happened? 
信じてもらえるかわからないんですけど僕たち妙な事件に巻き込まれてるんです I don't know if you'll believe us but we've been dragged into a bizarre incident Oh, a very bizarre incident You might say it's a bizarre adventure Oh my god, John Zico! Oh god, why did I say that? Uh, we wanted some advice, so we looked for you, Miss Anna. Incident? Advice? What might this be all about? Well, I guess we should start from the beginning. Dum -da -dum -dum -dum. You see, Marshro, who can actually use empathy, by the way, uh, Found a search into a terrorist mine and found that they were planning attack. Blah 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 blah. We hid around, around around town, uh, all around. You know, we gone for dangerous accidents. I have super ultra psychic god powers, by the way. Thank you very much. That can only activate in an emergency. Salyu is a martial arts master, and the terrorists chasing us. Also, the facility that we went to on a field trip is totally fucking fake. Happened on the bus, the possibility of Q being in the city, and the reason the security department was chasing them. So we did lead out the part of the Mastro using empathy. Oh, that is sweet of him. That is sweet of him. Once the story was done, Anna muttered. So. So. I see. So that's what happened. Masana, you believe us? Wow. Yeah, I know she said something like this in Rude A, too. But she is such a good person. You are my students, so I believe what you say. And I believe you kids acted with a, in accordance with a pure sense of justice. Kids were about to sigh in relief for what Anna said next stopped them in their tracks. But for that very reason, I don't think you should involve yourselves in this incident any further. No way. Why not? You are a bunch of high schoolers trying to fight terrorists. Even with psychic powers, this is ridiculous. Yes, I guess you could say that she believed what you say. <laughs> she is. <laughs> As a teacher, there's no way I can improve some students putting themselves in danger, can I? Who do you think I am, Miss Frizzle? それぐらい警戒すべき相手よ。Q is just that dangerous of an organization. Professor, you know about Q? Of course I do. I'm a teacher at Rokume Academy, you know? Apparently, Mashiro and the trainer were right. It did appear to be an infamous organization. However. Uh, so, why are you being so. As Mashiro trailed off on her words. Anna spoke with an exasperated smile on her face. So, eh? Alright. If I want you kids to understand where I'm coming from, it looks like a special lesson is in order. What do you mean, a special lesson? Get your, get your head out of the gutter! Friggin' Nozico! Friggin' Nozico! It's not something I teach in normal lectures. But I do believe it's something you three should know. A special lesson? Anna nodded and quietly began to speak. Interesting. The truth is that BC and terrorism share an inseparable relationship. 
PC の真の歴史についても当然習ったわ。While I was studying parapsychology in college, I naturally learned the true history of BC. コミュニケーターが現れて、それから社会がどう変異していったか。Society underwent many changes after the emergence of communicators. その極めて不安定で危険に満ちた歴史をね。It's a history steeped in danger and extreme instability. A history steeped in danger? As you know, 16 years ago was a turning point, with the explosive increase in the number of communicators worldwide. Correct? But in the past, the society was not able to get it. But do you think society at the time just simply accepted it? So, you mean it didn't? So, this year, Toji no communicator was no look in Taka Kunakata da Roshi. Just a telepathy of Skyler Stokura in Mushkida. Yeah, I thought communicators only had low ability levels back then. I knew that some people could use a better telepathy, and that was that. Skyler Gawa, Sono Tedo, and Kangaira, eh? Demo. The experts probably didn't think it was that big of a deal, but not everyone else believes that necessarily. Anna frowned as she spoke. 最初にコミュニケーターに対し激しい拒否反応を示したのはごく一部の人間だけだった。At first, only a small minority of people displayed intense rejection of communicators. 2014年2月、フランスの事件よ。コミュニケーターが住んでいた村にある妄想に取りつかれた男たちが。Oh my god, France! はあ。There was an incident in France in February 2014. Man obsessed with some delusion set fire to a village a communicator lived in. 放火 ?Fire! ひどい。どうして ?That's terrible! Why? 犯人たち曰く、コミュニケーターは悪霊に取り憑かれた悪しき存在だからとのことよ Oh god, this is just... Dang, this just really hits close to home According to the arsonists It was because communicators are abominations possessed by impure spirits 悪霊どういう意味 Impure spirits What's that supposed to mean? It's a bunch of cuckoo caca heads Seriously, just doing anything to vilify minorities for political gain. As a history of humanity. Apparently, there's this story in the Bible. By the shore of the Sea of Galilee, there was a man possessed by impure spirits. He dwelt by the tombs and would often hear spirits' voice and suffer. When asked for his name, the man replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. その悪霊はやがて男の体から追い出されたが、代わりに。The impure spirits were eventually exorcised from the man's body, and instead they entered a nearby herd of pigs. Soon, the pigs were carried away and were carried away to the river to be drowned in the river. Upon which, the pigs began to run like mad and fell into the lake one by one, where they drowned. Upon which, the pigs began to run like mad and fell into the lake one by one, where they drowned. What is that? That's quite an ominous story. What's up with that? I don't know. That's quite an ominous story. What's up with that? I don't know. このエピソードが何を意味しているのかはずっと宗教論者の議論の対象だったらしいの。I don't know. The significance behind that story has always been a subject of discussion among religious scholars, apparently. だけどその犯人たちはこう考えたのよ。But this is what the arsonists thought. コミュニケーターは我々の聞けない声を聞く。それは悪霊の声だ。Communicators hear voices that we do not. Those are the voices of impure spirits. 
悪霊に取りつかれた悪しき存在なのだ故に神罰を下さねばならない They are abominations possessed by impure spirits and therefore they must be punished by God No way! That's crazy Yes it is but remember How think of how smart the average person is and think half of all people are dumber than that So ne Indeed, I think so too. Indeed, I think so too. Of course, those arsonists were punished. Unfortunately, there were no casualties. Thus, the incident was soon forgotten. But, I think it was the beginning of the communicator and the Japanese communicator. But in retrospect, that was the beginning. The start of the antagonism between communicators and ordinary people. And his expression remained unchanged. But his voice gradually grew more stern. Communicators were targeted by normal people for the sole fact that they were communicators. And those incidents only increased in frequency afterwards. In April that same year, a young American communicator was lynched in Brooklyn. In that's a very famous quote from Men in Black. Like seriously, absolutely. A person is smart and people are dumb. Absolutely, yeah, that that is a very famous quote from that movie. The following months, an entire apartment building was burned to the ground in China. In June it was Germany. In July, Italy and America. In August it was Germany, France and Austria. In September it was Russia, France, America and China. I had my hands full for counting all of these similar incidents. Did you know it happened in this very town too? The great Rokume city arson. So, so I know about that! So, yes, you're a good learner, Miss Tova. It's not a very well talked about incident nowadays. And I spoke with a smile. It was a smile tinged with sadness. Yep, and that's exactly what the sprite shows too. Communicator na goku shousu de BC ga okaruto na hanchu ni osamatte iru jidai ni wa konda mondai wa okinakatta. These problems never happened back when communicators were extremely few in number, and BC was dismissed as the occult. Sore made ni mo communicator wa ita to mou kedo. I do believe there were communicators before that, but at best, the options available to them were to become leaders of new age religions, to work as TV talents, to set up their own hotline, and people call them. Or to hide their abilities as most of them did and live in secret. But as communicators started appearing more and more and their numbers rapidly grew, the situation instantly intensified. It was as if all of a sudden, a new hue breed of humans was born. And many people fear the demise of the old human race. BC ga 
努力で身につけられるものならよかったのだけど BC の適性は遺伝子によって生まれつき決まってしまうから。It would have been fine if BC was something you could just learn if you put in the effort. But since BC aptitude is genetic and decided upon birth, well, uh. And that Anna trailed off after that, allowing silence to fill the classroom. My god, Nakazawa just. Dang. Wow, this is. Wow. Even though, oh, even though the room temperature wasn't that cold, Natsuko felt a spine chill. A strange fear sank into his heart. Even faced with the reality of humanity. Anna continued. That antagonism eventually turned into fear. And that fear gave birth to terrorism. Well, I mean, obviously. Terrorism is, of course, derived from the Latin word terror, after all. Oh. People resort to terrorism either when they fear others or when they want others to fear them. It's a sad but inevitable course of events. I, I don't believe it. But are we at peace now? <laughs> oh, you poor sweet summer child. It took he took an extraordinary international effort to build that peace. And of course, Japan was part of that effort. Two years after the great Rokume city arson, the BC law was enacted to protect communicators. And at the same time, 60 in Japan were established as government designated top secret cities, protective boards for communicators, beginning here with Rokume City. So, the communicators throughout the country were moved into these government designated top secret cities. They were moved? You mean they had no choice? Yes. No, it was as it at its core voluntary. But communicators living in the countryside received insistent advice from the government to move. Of course, the government reimbursed the full amount to move and even provided anything from occupation and housing referrals to large reserve funds on a case by case basis. Why would the government go that far? Because BC and communicators are a really big resource. Can you imagine what you can do? To preserve public order, nothing more. They wanted to defuse the antagonism between communicators and ordinary people. The urgent matter at hand was to establish the idea that communicators all live in government designated top secret cities as common sense. Wow. Oh god, this sounds horrible now. Jeez. I think that would just make the situation worse though. Oh, God. 
Have I segregating the community as the ordinary people would be able to rest peacefully? Ooh, wow, that sounds really horrible now. The migration went over smoothly and friction was minimized. Look up here is walking to the stream. And so with all its communicators gathered in one spot, Japan was able to get its BC research organized for undisturbed progression and thus become an advanced BC nation. So basically, this town isn't merely a research city. It is a national fortress established by the state to protect communicators like you. <laughs> when he heard the story to its end, Natsuko finally understood the truth behind this town. Why the town has such strong public order? Why the city was so vigilant against criminal activity to the point of installing surveillance cameras in the city gates? He heard that it was all to protect the local research facilities from industrial espionage, but... Were they actually trying to protect the communicators? No, the public order of society itself. And it continued as the kids were left speechless. <laughs> but the more society system strengthened, the more crafty the terrorists became. Seriously, Avalis, yeah. This protection sounds like containment. Yeah, ugh. It's sounding really... Oh, wow. Ugh. And Q was the most crafty and vindictive organization of them all. Q know this already, but they have successfully carried out terrorism in the past. As of yet, there haven't been any cases of them targeting government-designated top-secret cities. But I don't for a moment think your story is a joke, kids. And I quietly sighed. It appeared that the reason she honestly believed their story was it because of the possibility she had feared from the very start? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, boy. I understand that Q is a dangerous organization. Probably because they can't find them. Why hasn't the police arrested them? That's because for the most part, Q's members consist of ordinary people who happen to be in the area of operation. Ordinary people? Unlike extremist groups and town guerrillas of the past, she doesn't make grandiose claims of its existence. And of course, they don't have any sort of hideout where they practice some combat or anything. God, frickin' Nakazawa, what the fuck? Is Nakazawa a communicator or something? Jeez. They merely use their proprietary network to search for ordinary people who dislike communicators and then slowly convince these people to join their cause. Fucking Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg can eat shit! But if the terrorists solicit, won't they get caught right away? 
カモフラージュのためさまざまな名前を使うの。No, then they solicit like-minded people. They use various different names for camouflage. 例えば。コミュニケーターとの関わりについて考えるとか。ジーズスファッキンクライスわお !This is terrifying! ファッキンナクサウマン !Like, what the fuck? ブランネームズ like the association for consideration of relations with communicators. ジーズスクライス<笑>だからその時点では構成員となる人自身も自分が急に入ったんだって気づかないらしいの。But once they join these camouflage organizations, the members themselves don't realize they've actually joined Q. 組織の実態は大半の構成員にさえ分かってない。そもそも Q という組織名すら便宜上の故障に過ぎない。Like, what the actual shit, Nakasawa? This was written when? In, in 2000 fucking 11? The majority of its own members don't understand the truth of the organization. The name Q itself is nothing more than a designation given for convenience. That's why it's hard for the police to make arrests. So you go to the top of the sky. Is that how it works? That seemed to be the reason why Natsuko hasn't even heard of the name Q until just a few days ago. Because Q is unique, not so unique anymore. Kind of terrorist organization. w h e n his very structure was ambiguous. But Q s taught Bria so we're working solely to commit, a, commit terrorism, though, right? So, yo, Joseph Bu a Musuni do Kabu Kosei Kara, Jiko Hanto Nariu do Jimbu to Erande, Nanem o Kakete Teroke Kako Sumete. Of course, the top brass have been pulling off terrorist acts for years by going through their countless subordinate members. And selecting the ones most suitable to take the fall as perpetrators. Jiko Haniva, target to another Tatemono no Dono Kanke Shaga, and Abare Kotomo. Oftentimes they choose staff members with connections to the target buildings to be the perpetrators. Naitsu Shana Sonzaiga, Karela no Tero no Seiko Ritsu Agate no. The use of such sleeper agents increases the success rate of their terrorist acts. So no Kesoguru to Shinne or Sasairo no. God. Wow. <laughs> What supports their unity and belief is a hatred of the unknown. <sighs> God. <laughs> wow. I. Jibun touch to Karela, a chigo to you, the kede, Tasha, Mikumi, Hai Sexy, Kizutsuke, Hateva, Machini, Hio Hanate, Rigio, no Sessin Koso. The mere thought that they're not like us, easy enough to incite them to hate others, ostracize them, injure them, and finally set down the place. Their mentality is abnormal! There are people like that in the world? Oh, yeah, yeah there's a lot of them. Natsuko's very core shuddered to hear the entire story. Not once in his life did he expect there to be people who hated communicators like him to that extent. We've never even met. We've never even done anything wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. That was when Naltiko first knew that the world was full of malice. A peaceful life was not a given, but rather something narrowly established in a precarious balance. As the kids cast their eyes downward at the newfound truth, Anna spoke to them gently. I'm sorry, it must be a shock. 
こういう社会の真の姿や本物の悪意の存在は大人になってから知るべきなのに He worked with Uchikoshi again on for the secret to AI. Oh, wow, that's that's really sweet. Awesome, GAs. Thank you for that update. As the ugly truth of society and the existence of genuine malice, should be things left for you to find out when you grow up. That's why this school doesn't teach those things. It would give needless anxiety to these students. And surely spread the seeds of antagonism, too. This town polices information and filters the internet. So honestly, if you looked into it, you could still find out about Q's existence and what not. That did seem like an obvious decision on the school's part. But the school instilled the fear of ordinary people into the minds of all the communicators who attended. The cycle of antagonism would never end. Yeah, World's End Club. I mean, yeah, it's a bad sign when the, the fake premise you have going into the World's End Club is more interesting than what actually the game was about. <laughs> and the art style I didn't really care for, for World's End Club. But you know, I thought that you three would be able to accept that truth calmly. Miss Tova, the most diligent of the class. Miss Sanomia, the wisest of the class. And Mr. Tenkawa, the one with the highest aptitude in the class. The Koboko Torio Dakedo, Nakarakoso, Saninara, Uketo Mirareru Hazione. You're a mismount, Torio. But that's why this two of you together can come to terms with this truth, right? Uh, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, uh, right? Oh, God. Well, you pure hearts. Yeah, we're not the type to lose hearts to some dumb malice like that or whatever. I promise that even in the off chance something does happen, I will protect those two. So? I see. I'm glad I told you then. So. Anna smiled sweetly and then she spoke clearly and distinctly. Leave the rest up to the adults. You kids should just behave and stay put. Uh -huh. Huh? But I mean, you're freaking kids! I heard from the security department and the police after yesterday's bomb threat. They're already considering the possibility of terrorism. That's why the city is under martial law. If terrorism happens in this city now, it could shatter a system ten odd years in the making. It might be harsh of me to say this, but it will just be a hindrance for kids to be moving back and forth. I'm sure the security department thinks so too, 
Which is why they're trying to take you into protective custody. But you're telling us to just sit, sit back and do nothing. We can't! The whole city could be in danger! Are you just gonna watch as it happens, Miss Anna? I know, but I'm not just going to watch. These stones so beautiful. It just makes you want to protect it. Even if there really is a hole in this perfect surveillance system, the town is precious to its townspeople. We get Anna points, oh my god. <laughs> wow, this is our first one on Route B. As she spoke, Anna glanced at the classroom door. But even so, you three need to head home now. And if the security department people show up, you should follow their instructions. That's the number one thing you three should do for now. Minus one? Wait, what? Natsuko felt irritated. Wait, why did I get a minus point? Natsuko felt irritated. You can tell Anna was worried about both them and the city. Yeah, well, it was a Mashiro point, right? And I have a billion Mashiro points, so that should be okay. But in the end, her opinion still didn't mesh with theirs? Damn it. We need to persuade her somehow. There has to be some way we can convince her. As soon as Natsuko pondered that question, Mashiro suddenly spoke up. Uh, I understand, Miss Anna. I will do as you say. Wink, wink. Uh huh? Huh? Natsuko was surprised, but Anna spoke in relief. Thank you. It makes me happy as a teacher to have such obedient students. Uh, it's because, uh, it's because I've always respected you, Miss Anna. Okay, Natsuko! Saw you! Let's go home! Wink, wink! Did you just say wink? No, hold on a second, Mashiro. It's a little sudden for you to just say... Just come over here! Wink, wink! At around the same time Mashiro said that, she used telepathy. Okay, not take up because you're so freaking dense. Don't say anything, guys. I'll explain the situation once we're outside. Let's just run away for now. As soon as Natsuko heard that message, he couldn't stop himself from raising his voice. Run away from what? God damn it, Natsuko! <laughs> huh? Anna gave a stern expression for a second. Mashiro got flustered and waved her hand. <laughs> oh, silly Natsuko! Doing a crazy suggestion! Come on, uh, let's go, guys. Let's go home and be responsible students. Oh, oh. Uh, right. Of course. <laughs> oh. Roger. Before Nazi and saw you could understand what was going on, Mashu let them out. They left Anna alone with a dubious expression on her face. Hey, Mashiro, what did you mean by run away? Shh, shut up, you freaking idiot. Mashiro shushed him and answered with telepathy. 
We can't trust Miss Anna. Seriously? She's not open her heart in her heart to us. <laughs> oh my god, Evelyn. <laughs> Salyu says, Well, Natsuko, I feel like I must compliment you. I'm not good with emotions and lies, but even I caught that. Oh god damn it. Ooh, yeah, but that's because Anna is some kind of corporate spy or something. Clearly. And she doesn't want them to know. I hope, I, my hope is that Anna is like some kind of FBI investigator or Japan's version of FBI and like secretly investigating the terrorists. What does that mean? When she finished talking, Miss Anna seems oddly obstinate, didn't she? So I tried to see if I could use empathy on her, but... I couldn't hear her mental voice at all. That's proof she isn't opening her heart. Shiro's eyes were blurred with sadness. No way. Smiley saw it in his face now just flickered in the back of Natsuko's head. It was such a kind smile, the appearance, and yet. Did Professor Subakiyama actually not trust us? He couldn't understand why not. We could smell danger somewhere. That's what I hope. I'm gonna be really sad if Anna is bad. Oh, I hope that she's like a secret agent investigating the terrorism. If we stay here too long, she could call the security department on us. Let's get out of here calmly, but quickly. Uh. Yes, uh, calmly like a movie or calmly like a book? Calmly like a book. The kids walked down the hallway trying to look as casual as they could. Nearly blasting through surveillance camera dead spots all the while. So, where do we go next? Huh. Oh, we're in a tight spot, huh? Because we can't find Mr. Okita. Oh, we're out of adults we can trust. There's no other adults with sprites. Except the rescue squad. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Sal, you brought that up in Route A. Huh. Oh, wow. Huh. Natsuko pondered Mashiro's observation. I noticed that he did have one person in mind. I hope it's you. What's up, Natsuko? You think of someone? Yeah, I think it's June. Oh, that's gonna be sweet. I'd love to see June again. Well, kind of, but we're barely acquainted, though. Who? Someone both you and Sal you know. Huh? Ah! It seemed to finally click for Mashiro when he said that. And that's why, oh, wow. That's why she suggested that in Route A. Yes, when you've been cornered, I guess it really is a hero that you need. And with that, the kids left school. As they boarded the taxi, the driver asked them, We're here next. The fire station! Tally ho! The driver nodded and began to input their next destination. Oh, new background. Rekame City, Central Fire Station. I got to quickly uh, take a quick bathroom break. I will be right back.
great. I'm back. Roka Bay City Central Fire Station. I'm to kill Mastro and Sal. You got off on the taxi in front of a building they had never visited before. They weren't entirely sure of how the fire department was organized, but the rescue squad members were probably here too. The fire station. So that means we're here to see June Maribe. Exactly. But it's kind of a gamble, though. Uh, I hope June's around! Considering what had happened so far, they had no room for optimism. We might get the same reaction we got from Professor Tsubakiyama. So, we need to be careful. I don't know if I can pull it off or not, but I'll try using empathy too. Not eco powers! Activate! I just can't make Mashiro do all the work. And with that thought in mind, they stepped foot onto the premises, prompting a cheerful voice to call out to them. Huh? Well, if it isn't Natsuhiko, Mashiro and Louise! What's up, sugar? Ah, konnichiwa, Jun-san. Hello, June. Oh, it's been a while. Uh, hello. Oddly enough, Salya seemed to have read the atmosphere and greeted her courteously. Yeah, great to see such well-mannered kids. So, what brings y'all to these parts? Y'all didn't come all the way to here to see little me, did now, did you? Oh my god. Seriously? Come on, like, look at that. <laughs> she totally has a freaking southern accent. So on this. Actually, we did. Uh, oh, wait, seriously? Uh, you see, there's something we want to talk to you about. I can explain the circumstances to the cheerful and casual June. I told her about the terrorists boiling with hatred in the city. <laughs> Hilarious juice. Not to go bright, gonna do this right. Oh, wrong game. Jeez. <laughs> oh, he told her about the possibility those terrorists could conduct and destructive activities in various parts of town. And at the end of their explanation, June asked them with a serious look on her face. It... Is that true? It might sound like a joke, but it's true. Yeah, you guys sound like you're for real. As June made a bitter face, Mashiro asked her again. June, do you believe us? Well, if I had to just go by your store alone, it'd be hard to believe right off the bat, you know? But there have been some things that have been bugging me lately, see? What do you mean? Well, they've been deploying us way too much lately. There's been such a spike in the sheer number of incidents alone that it just feels unnatural. June, do you think those accidents and incidents could be connected to terrorism? I was thinking that. GA's like, it's crazy how Mashiro is just as tall as June. It's like, it's insane. I never thought about it at all. Hearing all stories sure makes me think so. The atmosphere at work has gotten so tense lately. 
I wonder if everyone else is starting to think something was all. I see. As he listened to June's answer, Natsuko concentrated with all his mind. Focusing. Focusing. Empathy powers. Ooh. First, he searched for June's characteristic brain waveform and quickly identified it. June's a type 8, huh? That was the waveform associated with idealists and challengers. He found it fitting as he concentrated further. Now I need to try the same trick when I read Mob's mind. Assuming that wasn't just a hallucination, that is. Focus from the bottom of my heart. I want to know what's on her mind. June Moribe, open your heart to me! He fiercely wished to know whether or not June truly believed what they said. Huh? What's wrong, Natsuko? What's with that strained look all of a sudden? Y'all need to use the bathroom? Natsuko paid no heed to her voice and concentrated further. And suddenly, June's natural voice disappeared and another voice echoed in his head. Uh, hey, are y'all okay? Hey, here. It's like I can't even hear me. What's wrong, honestly? It... Is it that worried? Well, I guess so. I mean, they are asking me for help. Yeah. So in that case, I better give him some reassurance. Oh. Oh, oh. oh my god. Oh my god. I'm a real badass. Whoa. Take it easy there, partner. Oh, are y'all okay? Oh, oh, oh. time he was certain that it was no hallucination that was june's mental voice i used empathy oh hell yes it was surprised and grateful looks like i figured out the trick i guess intention really is important perhaps people are best able to learn new abilities when they truly need them Furthermore, June's innermost thoughts were full of concern for the three of them. Natsuko took a big breath of relief. I'm okay. It was just so big a relief that you believed us that I nearly passed out. A little faint of heart, are we? That's no good. Gotta man up if you're a boy. Oh, but that's great! There's no one else we can count on! Oh, shucks. <laughs> I'm glad to help out however I can. Well, terrorism's a little out of our area of expertise. If y'all like, I'm sure I can talk with someone up. Before June could complete her sentence, a shrill sound interrupted her. Oh, crap, basket. Uh, what? What's that sound? Come on, Natsiko, you could guess. We're at a fire station. A dispatch! That very moment, June's face became stern. And at the same time, they heard a siren echo from the fire station building. <laughs> What's going on? I'm guessing it's got something to do with that. <gasps> what? Ah! Kids didn't notice until June mentioned it. Far off in the distance, they could see black smoke. Don't tell me that's another terrorist attack. The moment that thought crossed Natsuko's mind, June patted him on the shoulder. Uh, sorry, I gotta go check it out for a bit. Looks like we'll have to save this discussion for later. June! 
Not sure it spoke with an expression full of anxiety. But Jun just smiled to cheer up. <laughs> oh, now what's with that face, sugar? <laughs> the desire to protect this town is something all of us share. And I'm gonna protect this town my way. So y'all do whatever it is you can, capiche? Hey. Yes! Yup, good answer. Later, guys. See ya! Kids wave their hand at you as June is headed inside the fire station. Before long, a fire truck emerged from the station and passed by. Altiko muttered as they watched it leave. Do whatever it is we can, huh? Yeah. They nearly had June's cooperation, but they still couldn't quite get it. But that, be that as it may, just loitering here until June returned wouldn't quite be doing whatever it is they could. Yes. Okay, let's go too. Huh? Huh? If June's dispatching to the site of a terrorist attack, then the culprit might be there too. They say the culprit always appears at the scene of the crime, right? Let's leave the firefighting to June's team. We'll go search for the culprit. And with that decision made, the kids boarded onto the taxi once more. Mr. Driver, follow that fire truck! Hop up! <laughs> Hell yeah! I've always wanted someone to tell me that! Okay, voice command, drive mode manual! Here we go, boys and girls! The driver slammed the accelerator and the taxi sped off! Towards the lingering smoke in the distance. Ooh, Mashiro Toba's abilities. We're gonna see her get a power boost, eh? Let's see. And soon enough, the taxi stopped. The kids were shocked to see what lay before them as they got down. Look at how well detailed this freaking screen is. Yeah? Oh my god, it was the PRC. Oh, wow. Same institution that they had known Q to be a Q target since yesterday. An explosion probably happened here. There were shards of glass everywhere. The building was wrecked. June's team was apparently already inside, fighting fires and saving lives. So this place really was being targeted. The terrorists have finally sprung into action. Natsuko nodded and looked around. There were onlookers gathered around the building. Crowd of the course included staff members who escaped the building as well as policemen and security department people, but the culprit could be in the crowd. <laughs> yes, the culprit always appears at the scene of the crime, they say. Unless, of course, they used a remote detonator or a time bomb, but whatever. They weren't quite sure of the authenticity of that saying, but that was all they could rely on for now. It is quite a difficult task to find the culprit since they had no leads. Mashiro, can you search the crowd for the man you saw on the bus two days ago? Huh. In a crowd this big, it's obviously going to be hard. He might not be wearing the same sunglasses after all. But maybe we can find it with unconventional methods. Hmm? Like what? Let's just say there's more than one way you think you're telepathy. Hold on to your ears, Natiko! It's about time you experience my newest ability! Mashiro gave a bold smile as she placed a finger at a temple. 
The culprit hates communicators. So let's exploit that hatred. I'll send untargeted telepathy to all the onlookers. You guys watch for anyone whose reaction looks suspicious. Oh, oh, got, the... okay, got it. Roger. I apologize for the language in advance. So don't be surprised, okay, motherfuckers? Well, here we go! And with that, Marshall closed her eyes. Hey, you dumbass boomer! You think you got away, stupid? You ain't communicators, huh? So why the hell are you watch the fire when there's one right behind you? Heads bleeding to left the echo inside their heads. At the same time, all the onlookers cowered in fear. Do anyone's reactions look off? Once you go and saw you dotted their eyes around the crowd. People were bewildered. People were looking around. There were various reactions, but... Ha! Huh. Just one person's reaction stood out as different. At the same time, Mastro's telepathy rang out. A man turned and looked behind his shoulder in shock. Huh? That man looked familiar to Natsuhiko. A stern face, huge body, and finally his Mastro, uniform. Saryu, Mastro, saw you. It's him! The girls followed the, pa followed the path of Natsuhiko's finger, and their faces stiffened. That's... Ooh, it's the security guard. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. The very same security guard that they ran into when they trespassed from the PRC yesterday. The words they heard from Anna earlier in the day came to mind. Oftentimes, they choose staff members with connections to the target buildings to be the perpetrators. The use of such a sleeper agent increases the success rate of their terrorist acts. Sleeper agent. That was exactly the answer to the question that had been bugging Natsuko since yesterday. The answer to why the security guard overreacted to what they said back then, too. The answer to why he had filed a, f filed a false report to the security department. Because he's the culprit behind everything. The moment he made that realization, he heard the onlookers start a commotion. Who is that telepathy just now? Yeah, she said something about a bomber. That's when Mastro sent in more telepathy. Officers! Security department people! The bomb is that guy who looks like a security guard. So it's He's super duper dangerous. So all you onlookers need to be careful, okay? The commotion grew even louder. The security guard in question became quite uncomfortable and tried to slip his way out of the crowd of onlookers. Saw you. I know. It's my turn now. Let me show you my powers. Who would have thought the muscle of our group would be a 13-year-old girl? And with that, Salyu slipped into the crowd and chased after the security guard. Mashiro, it's dangerous, so stay back. Natsuko warned Mashiro as he chased after Salyu. Once the security guard slipped out of the crowd... Huh! <laughs> Salyu powers. Salyu let out a batter cry and lunged at him, dragging him into an alley. HA! <laughs> you brat! So so you saw the security guard in the knee before he could finish talking. Damn it! Security guard pulled out his extendable baton. Sha! But as soon as he got it at the ready, saw you front kicked his wrist. The baton tumbled onto the ground, but saw you didn't stop. Her gracefully extended executed roundhouse kick drew an arc through the air into the back of his neck. What the hell? Security guard muttered a moan and collapsed to the ground. <laughs> he tried to get up, but his knee gave out and he couldn't stand. 
You should stop resisting. You have no chance to succeed. <laughs> stop it, Salyu. You're going overboard. Uh, don't kill him. We need him alive for questioning. Roger. Natsuko rushed up next to Salyu and tried to be the voice of reason. He stood between Salyu and the security guard and interrogated the man. You're with Q, aren't you? The security guard didn't answer. His facial expression merely moved ever so slightly. There's no doubt about it. He's a terrorist. Natsuko continued with conviction. <laughs> Because of you, we had the security department breathing down our necks. We're going to prove our innocence by turning you into security department and making you talk. Sirudar's face warped. He staggered up to his feet. There's no point trying to escape with a pitiful limp like that. So the security, the security department swarming all over the place. The moment he thought that, Mashiro's voice echoed in the alley. So, so uh, uh, it's right! This is the end of your evil deeds! Masaru, I said not to come, idiot! He turned around and shouted at Masaru, who created a moment so good. <laughs> Security of pulled a small knife out of his pocket. Natsuko, watch out! The sound of Salyu's voice left Natsuko breathless. Security guard readied himself. <laughs> Stabbed the oh into his own stomach. <laughs> huh? Natsuko doubted his eyes. A spray of blood from the man's stomach splashed into Salyu's face. Uh, oh wow! Time seemed to stop for a moment. That was, of course, just an illusion. <laughs> Mashiro screamed, snapped Natsuko and Salyu back to their senses. Don't touch that, whatever you do. So, so He's, he stabbed himself? Why? To tell me he did it to avoid getting apprehended by the security department. Has he succeeded in blowing up the PLC, his duty is done? So he's basically like a suicide bomber? Mashiro shouted as a confused Natsuko. Huh? The terrorist? Of course. Oh, what if he dies? Uh, uh, well, we need to get his confession. Certainly taking a life was not on their attention in the slightest. Well, they didn't do it. So he spoke up quietly. Exactly. So you. If he dies, then we won't be able to prove our innocence. Oh my god, they showed the CG when promoting the game? Oh my god. Wow, this is so out of context. This is like showing that CG of Battler and his parents eat like in the in the episode 8. Like as a promo. Like seriously. <laughs> in episode 8 of Umineko. Like, oh my god. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. That's this is the wrong CG to to promote the game. Everyone would think she's a Yandere or something. My god. <laughs> if he dies, then we won't be able to prove her innocence. So, so uh, uh, that's right. Let's call an ambulance. But they didn't have their PDAs to call them on 119. The kids reluctantly dashed out the alley look for a payphone. As they got out, they heard some onlookers talking amongst themselves. Hey, did you hear a scream? Did you have anything to do with that telepathy earlier? And then it mixed in with those onlookers they saw familiar people linging around. They were the men they had been fearing ever since yesterday. The security department. Oh no, what do we do? A few minutes ago, they would have run. The situation was different now. <laughs> it might be a long shot, but let's turn the culprit over to them. We know that I know for a fact, for some reason, that we're going to be in the power plant tomorrow, so I don't think we'll be arrested. Huh? Huh? 
If we tell the security department, I'm pretty sure they'll call an ambulance for us, and besides... If we want to clear our names, now might be our only chance. Are you sure it won't complicate things if we show them the crime scene? Well, Mashiro, not as long as you guys didn't touch the knife. Your fingerprints aren't on it, and you're not wearing gloves. If they saw it, they'd accuse us of stabbing an upstanding citizen in retaliation for filing a report on us. I know it's a gamble, but we can't keep running forever, can we? Besides, if we don't act quickly, he'll die. No more running, no more hiding. Our best option is to talk to the security department now and get them to understand the truth. So, so uh, uh, you're right. Oh, okay. Mashiro took a deep breath and yelled. The security department people over here, please! And he's attempted suicide too. Please call an ambulance. Whoa. Security department members rushed over once they heard the kids' voices. We've done what we could. As he watched security department members rush in, Natsuko prayed. Prayed that they made the right choice to clear their names of the false charge. Louise Yui Sanami's deduction. The kids explained the truth over to the security department. The security department called an ambulance and took the man to Rokume City Hospital. Fortunately, his wound wasn't as deep as they initially believed. Yeah, I thought so. If he really wanted to kill himself, he would have, like, slashed his wrist or something. And his treatment apparently went by relatively quickly. As for Natsuhiko, Mashiro, and Salyu, they were, they were taken to the municipal office and underwent a long, thorough investigation. They explained everything in detail to the security department starting with why they had sneaked into the PRC. It took a long time to get the security department to understand all the details, and they didn't seem easily swayed, but eventually the security department members went to the hospital and interrogated the security guard, just learning he had falsified the report and his abdominal injury was self-inflicted. Oh my god. Wow. Holy shit. Things actually working out. Oh yeah, I've got before it's if you uh, if you cut your wrist the correct way you'll die of blood loss. The kid, they kids methods. Oh, there's a bit of a typo. Earn them approval for their recklessness, but the results earn them recognition for successfully apprehending an alleged terrorist in the end. Oh my God! Wow. We're going to hyperspeed ahead. Thank you for your cooperation. And with the final stereotypical line from security department members who have been chasing them for hours, the kids left the municipal office. It was quite dark by the time they had gotten outside. <laughs> you know, they could have at least given us a reward. Mashiro grumbled as they walked. She was quite on edge when the investigation began. But once she heard the security guard was okay, she returned to her usual self. Yeah, Mr. Valda. Yeah. There's also... Like, if you really... The, the knife he used to cut his stomach wasn't deep enough, I don't think, to do it like the samurai way. And he stabbed it rather than sliding it across the stomach. So I think he was probably intending to frame them. I don't, I don't think he was intending to kill himself. I don't know if she's being too greedy or being too soft. Natsuko smiled wryly as he made his reply. Now, now, let's just be glad they didn't end up putting us in their custody, shall we? 
確かにねシャバの空気に勝るもにマシだね。Oh, well, yeah, I guess. Nothing's more valuable than freedom. 夏彦たちは無欲。You two are so unselfish. We brought in a frickin' terrorist. They should be throwing us a parade. Yeah, the neck would also be much faster. Yeah. I saw you seemed, unsa saw you seemed unsatisfied, but not Tika wasn't at all. Now that their names were cleared, they could move around without fear of the security department's shadow. And of course, that meant they could return home. Yare, yare. Yow, yak, hito, anshin, da na. Tega, nin, nin, nat, da, to, a, ye. Anin, wa, chan, to, tsuka, mat, ta, si. Yare, yare. We can finally rest easy. They may have been injured, but at least we caught the culprit. They said the full blown investigation will start once he's healed, right? I wish they'd pick up the pace for goodness sake. So, Dana. Demo Kyoa Mo, so she. Toriazu, Yeni Kaite Gohan in Shioka. I know, but it's getting late today, so let's just go home and eat for now. Gohan, Uresi. Choshoku Irai, Nani Motabete Nai. Yes, food. We haven't eaten anything since breakfast. Nazuko smiled as they were how they were finally able to have a calm conversation for the first time that day. Adventure! You must be hungry, huh, Salyu? I bet. You've been hanging it in there all this time, haven't you? Thank you, Salyo. Let me pat your head as thanks. Kawai so, kawai so. <laughs> Mashido petted Salyo's head just as she said she would. Salyo seemed a little ticklish, but she didn't seem to hate being petted as she obediently allowed Mashido to continue. I did it to protect you two. It's not like I did it for praise. Baka. <laughs> I didn't even need to say it. Just Mashiro just doing it on her own. There you go again. No need to be such a sundara, you little cutie. Oh. <laughs> it's not like I'm embarrassed or anything. Actually, I... Oh, there you go again. You're sure not helping your case by saying a line like that. Mushiro. You. It might be weird for me to say this, but... I thought today was kind of fun. Huh? Fun? You want to be an adventurer? Natsuko and Mashiro found themselves confused at the sudden mention of that word. Salyu nodded as she explained herself. Remember when we got on the bus two days ago? We made a promise to go around the city. Oh, oh. Huh, sure. And we fulfilled our promise in an unexpected way. We got chased and chased and ended up making an adventure all around town. How are they going to end up at the power plant at the crack of dawn after this? So this is the last day, isn't it? Like tomorrow is the day where everything goes down? We got chased and chased and ended up making an adventure all around town. <laughs> it was almost like I had slipped into the memories you two share. Oh, how ironic that you say that. Yuri is a professional at memories. How are memories? Yeah, your memories. Huh, that, that's kind of on the mark. 
Oh, you smiled and gazed at Mashiro and Nazika. I have no memories of my own. There was nothing for me in my hometown. Oh, jeez, did I miss any character scenes? My days were dark and ashen. Truly lifeless times. God, how was it like for her? But today is sure to become a good memory. I'm glad I came to this town. Huh. Natsuko inadvertently looked away from Salyu. He was taken completely off guard by Salyu's pure innocence. What's with this girl? She's way too honest. That's just not fair. He looked towards Mashiro. She was pressing down on the inner corners of her eyes with trembling fingers. Salyu! <laughs> oh my god! How goes like you put down with this voice to kill me with Moe? You're just like a character out of my Japanese anime! Ah, you do know that Moe is a dead word nowadays, right? Kill you with fire. <laughs> not, type the, not the right quite type of Moe, but uh, close enough. <laughs> oh, so there's still more. Jeez, how many more are there? I don't follow. Don't worry about it. Basically, she's just saying you're cute, that's all. So, uh, I see. Well, his eyes wandered in apparent confusion. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to say is that it was that today was fun. Oh, does everybody get one character scene left or something? Does, do all three of them each get one? We didn't get to go shopping, but we can save that for later. I want us all to go together. Can we? Oh, of course! Let's go shopping next Sunday for sure! I'm up for it too. It uh, looks like, oh wow. I think uh, then maybe next three might be the final one for uh, Route B. I'm up for it too. That's great. I'm glad you two agree. Uh? To be honest, I want new clothes. I really like the clothes you picked for me, Mashiro. I want you to pick something out for me again. I will, I will! I'll choose however many you want! Really, Guppy Force, there's that much left. Three to five stream? What? Holy shit! Jeez, I thought this was the last day! And we're at the evening. Jesus Christ. Is there anything else you want? Anything? I want a stuffed animal. What about that weasel you carry around? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Alice no good? That's not it. I just want stuffed animals for my room besides Alice. So I carry her everywhere. Alice 
and some martyr named Alice. I want you to name the next one Nazika. So, so ha, I see. <sighs> naming sense is not a Hmm, I'm not too confident in my naming sense, though. Nazika. Nazika, not even you can be tactless enough to turn it down here, can you? Uh, of course not. I'll come up with a name if you really want. Okay, I'd be happy if you did. I'm sure I'll treasure that stuffed animal. How about you as many wax stuffed animals and bombs of mass destruction as you want? Anything at all? I'll take care of your every need. Just leave it up to being sis over here. Nashida struck her chest triumphantly. As Natsuka watched the two girls talk, the short dream of the future. He saw Sayu looking around at all the stuffed animals she liked. He saw Masha enjoying herself and she saw Sayu with recommendations. He saw himself watching a short distance away. I'm sure that'd be a fun day. Natsuka secretly smiled to himself at the thought. She deserves at least that much of a reward. Since she's done so much for us today. That much was certain. But there was still one regretful thing that happened. <laughs> In the end, we couldn't stop the terrorists from blowing up the PRC like they wanted to, huh? Yeah, but uh, at least there weren't any casualties. That was another thing they had heard from the security department. Oh, wait, was that a character scene? Oh, we suddenly switched gears. Was that like Louise's last character scene? I mean, you know, uh, saw you la last character scene? That was another thing they had heard from the security department. Thanks to June's team, all the PRC staff members were rescued successfully. But that was still nothing to be happy about. Actually. There's one more thing that bothers me. Oh, that was her second to last. Okay, thank you, Guppy Force. Huh? Security guard wasn't the man I saw on the bus. Huh? So I guess there's still more of them in town. Natsuko gasped at Masha's statement. I see. I have an idea about that point. If you think about it calmly, the fact that the security guard stabbed himself in the stomach was also bizarre. Huh? What do you mean? Well, he did accomplish his mission to Lebeau at the PRC, he had no need to commit suicide. The fact that his wound was superficial is also worrying. The answer I can derive from these issues is that probably... Yay, saw you, you agree with me. His suicidal act was just that, an act. A performance to make it appear that all the incidents had reached a conclusive end. Performance? A performance? If he went that far, anybody would believe that he was the one behind the entire string of incidents. What if it was just an act to avert the public gaze away from other criminals? Uh, you mean... The incidents aren't over yet. Oh, crap, baskets. Everyone's faces stiffened at that statement. Natsuka stopped walking and interjected. Wait a minute. Let's think about it. 
Hold on a second. Before we get back home, let's think things through a bit. If there are still terrorists around, what else do you think might happen here? Uh, more terrorists in my guts? But what other targets are there? The BC related facilities that received the objectional literature. We heard that the security department was tightening their guard around those facilities. And the objectionable literature was a diversion for the Parapsychology Research Center bombing in the first place. Targeting, targeting those addresses would definitely defeat the purpose of the diversion. Then what else could they be up to? Natsuko got the feeling they were missing something important. Thought about what that missing something could be. Awesome. They wouldn't have had to make such an elaborate diversion to do that. I thought that all the diversions were set up for the PRC bombing, but was that not the case? Do they have a target besides the PRC? Natsuko's train of thought led them to that point before something flashed in the back of his mind. He then realized exactly what was was that they were thinking. Hey, Mashiro? Yeah? The man on the bus you mentioned said ending the town's history, right? Well, yeah, but... Uh... But blowing up the PRC wouldn't end the town's history, would it? I mean, what if the PRC explosion itself were a diversion? Mashiro's <gasps> face froze at the suggestion. Just <laughs> wait! Uh, hold on! You mean they're targeting a bigger facility than the PRC? Ah, uh, so they must communicate Yes, something that sort of symbolizes the city, something they can destroy to satisfy their hatred against communicators. But where would you find a facility like that? The PRC is the biggest BC research facility in town, isn't it? You don't mean school, do you? No, they already caused a panic at school with that bomb threat, so... The moment Nazi could be able to speak... If it were me... So you finally broke her silence with a side utterance. I target that place. So you pointed at the map bus posted at the bus stop. On the other side of her fingertips was an illustration of the hexagonal building Labo. Labo? Huh? Labo? You mean those goofy cardboard kits Nintendo used to oh wait the power plant. Or is it? Salu. That's not a BC research facility. It's a nuclear research facility. I know, but if I'm not mistaken, they should have a nuclear reactor. Or do they? The moment he heard reactor, Natsuko was suddenly struck by an unpleasant feeling. Uh, and? These terrorists hate communicators. They're committing acts of terrorism that will end the town's history. Correct? Yeah. What if we take that to mean their true intention is to raise the town in its entirety? And destroy the communicators. 
secret marshmallow gas at the same time. Tashkani. Tatoeba, Asconia Genshiro, Merito down, Sasaba. Tashkani, Sonaba. You're right. If you cause a meltdown in the nuclear reactor there, they de that definitely would do it. Yeah, yeah. Masaka terrorist of the Mosona Bodos, neither show. No, no. Not even the terrorists would do that, would they? No, they. Why not? It's the most logical target. Yeah, but uh, she couldn't find out to continue. It's like his idea sounded like a crazy delusion, but it couldn't necessarily be dismissed as nonsense. If they did blow up the nuclear reactor, that certainly would end the town's history. The moment he thought that, Suddenly heard Ukita's words playing back in his head. Russia no Chernobyl Genpats de Okita Jiko no Hanashiwa. Minasan mo Kita Koto ga a You have probably heard of the nuclear, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster in Ukraine. Sore ni yoru shisha wa bodae na kazu ni nobori mashita. Causing enormous casualties. Kinnin no jumin ya jiko shori ni atatta shoboshi nado sanzen nin ga shibou. So shite sono go mo fue tsuzuke mashita. The residents in the vicinity and the firefighters sent in to handle the accident. We the hardest. Over 3,000 of them died. And the number only rose after that. Nausicaa uh. shuddered. Moshe started to tremble. Then you make the PLC explosion was another diversion? And Q's real target is Labo? Calm down, Mashro. It's just conjecture, that's all. So, That's right. What I said was nothing more than conjecture. Uh, yeah, but it's still a possibility. So, should we go to Labo and give him a warning? So, hmm. Maybe, but Labo. Uh, my mother works. Uh, he swallowed his words. Natsuko didn't want to go anywhere near Labo, no matter what Mashito said. Because no, okay, that's why it's gonna be long. Because we're gonna be getting that. Because never forget what happened nine years ago. Go, go. That's why it's gonna be a long time. On July seventh, twenty twenty one. Last year, that was the very same place he had exposed Yuri to life or death danger. Burned into Natsuko's memory was a fire. That day, Natsuko and Yuri sneaked into Labo to see the professor. Oh boy, that's why. But a fire broke out, and the kids were trapped in the facility. The fire alarm echoed. Yuri kept sobbing, and the broadcast voice kept repeating. In accordance with this emergency, security has shifted to blockade mode. Locking down all gates and bulkheads. Have a pleasant day. The gates shut down in front of them and wouldn't open. Darn it! Why won't it open? Don't crawl, Yuri. I'll do something. Tears welled up in Nalsiko's eyes. Tears of fear, tears of pain from slamming the gate with his fists. <coughs> Eventually, Yuri's coughing started to grow weak. If we stay here, Yuri's going to die. Oh, God. Nalsiko carried Yuri's body and suddenly started to walk. The smoke stung his eyes. He began to tear up. His breathing grew rough. His head hurt. Still, he aimlessly wandered, searching for a route to survival. Oh my god. And she was in that situation again. Oh my god. That's... Wow. When Watase saved her. Not Watase, but Kazami. Oh my god. Wow. Aimlessly wandered, searching for a route to survival. 
not even not Seiko quite remembered how they were saved after that. Probably had to do with some, them suddenly get getting their their psychic powers supercharged. He had only the faint memory that someone had come to save them. I wonder if it was Watase. No, no, no. It was I think it was Kazami and you. It was Kazami, yeah, I think. We were in the hospital before we knew it. But ever since then. That terror didn't end with that traumatic experience. Ever since that day, Yuri could no longer leave the house. Yeah, Yuri probably did not make it out with him. And it wasn't just Yuri that changed. That day around the same time as the fire, a small radiation leak occurred within the facility. Sure it did. Labo denied the ex existence of a leak. Oh, it was June who saved her. Uh, saved Natsuhiko, I should say. Okay, it was June. Okay, thank you, Chies. I, 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 I didn't know, because I, I first thought June would be too young to save them. Labo denied the existence of a leak, and no report was made mentioning it. Considering their efforts after the fact, Rachel's leak was the only possible explanation. Sure. Sure it was. It wasn't freaking Yuri's out-of-control, new supercharged psychic abilities. Natsuko was hospitalized for three months following the incident, and even after being discharged, he was required to undergo a yearly physical examination since the hospital. Oh, it's, yeah. No, I said Ka Kazami. Oh, wait. Are you sure it was June? I really thought it was Kazami who saved Yuri in the beginning of Rude. Oh, you misunderstood. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I knew Kazami saved her in the beginning of Rude, but yeah. Okay. I was actually right about something. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, the, the nine years ago, June was way too young. It was, uh, I think, um, I think it was might have been Watase who saved them. It was either Watase or Kazami who saved uh, them here. And June is, uh, well, I think June knew Yuri somehow. Because didn't June have a little sister? Like, Yuri was like a little sister to June, apparently. Okay, yeah, they both did. Kazami and June saved her in Rude, yeah. Okay. Nine years ago, we don't know who saved them. Okay, thank you, GAs. Not, anyway, back to the story. Natsuko was hospitalized for three months following the incident, and even after being discharged, she was required to undo a yearly physical examination in the hospital. But I do know that June thought of somebody as a little sister who was there, the girl that died. And so, quote-unquote, died is probably Yuri. Oh, and I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking of Nagisa. Yep. God, my memory sucks. Now you believe me when I say my memory is just really shit. Jeez. Now, yeah, that was Nagisa. So, but she was never mentioned. How did she die in that? That was Kazami's little sister. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. I was thinking of her. Okay. There's so many people. Even now, after nine years, had already passed in their narrow escape from death. Everything changed after that day. By now, Natsuko displayed no, essentially no system, symptoms of radiation exposure. His body was almost perfectly healthy. Okay, okay. Thank you for that, Jeez. So yeah, Nagisa died before the Labo incident. Okay from something else. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you for that. I really need these <laughs> reminders. Thank you so much. Not It was nothing to do with Lavo. Because, you know, you, you can understand why I was confused. Because, you know, like, a little girl around the same age who also died in, in the lab accidents. Yeah, I am definitely mixing up the two incidents. Who died in a fire. Yeah. Like... 
uh, they're very similar incidents that happened very close together. By now, Natsuko displayed essentially no symptoms. His body was almost perfectly healthy. With every passing July 7th, and with each member mention of Labo, I recall what happened back then. Natsuko and Yuri were still bound together by that incident even now. And yet I have to go to Labo again? The moment that thought crossed his mind, Natsuko began feeling nauseous. He broke out in a cold sweat and his throat went dry. His entire body was tormented by the unpleasant memory. Damn it. Is my body refusing to remember? Natsuko gritted his teeth, held back the urge to vomit, and finally wrung out some words. Even if Sayu's conjecture is correct. It's a problem that's out of our hands, Mashiro. And no way! Don't you worry, Natsuko! Of course I am. But even if Sayu's conjecture is right, what do you expect us to do? How in the hell do you suggest we stop terrorists from targeting a nuclear reactor? But uh, then what do you suggest we do? First, we contact Labo officials. As soon as Natsuko began to talk, I heard a familiar voice from behind them. Hmm? Oh god! Natsuko -kun -jai -ka. Hmm. Well, if it isn't Natsuko. Uh, uh. Huh. Oh. Natsuko gasped and looked at the owner of the voice. Oh boy. The car was parked at the shoulder of the road, and Okita had come out of the driver's seat. Mr. Okita! Who was looking for you? Is something the matter? What's all this commotion outside in a place like this? Okita questioned the kids with a curious look on his face. Suddenly, Natsuko remembered Mr. Okita's accident. I wonder how Mr. Okita still got into an accident, though. Beats me. Maybe there was a system error in his car's ADS? But I thought ADS failures were exceptionally rare. He didn't think too deeply about the cause of the accident at the time, but... What if that wasn't an accident? What if Q targeted Mr. Okita since he's with Lavo? Terrified, Natsuko rushed up to Okita. Mr. Okita, please listen. You see? Blah, 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 blah. Natsuko and Mashiro explained Sayu's conjecture. Okita probably didn't know who Sayu was, so they explained her story as well. Found out after you had finished hearing everything. Ukita spoke with a grim look on his face. Uh, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't put money on, like I I'd say 50-50 odds he's a part of this queue. Q's targeting us. This is a huge concern. You know about Q too, Mr. Ukita? Well, I mean, everybody goes on the internet. <laughs> Jeez. Computers are a hobby of mine. Naturally, that includes browsing the internet as well, which is how I happen to learn of them. Now, why would you say that? You, you know way more. But never in my wildest dreams did I ever expect they'd target my own workplace when we got nothing to do with them. His phrasing sounded a little cynical, but he appeared to have believed the kid's word. Mashiro, Matsuhiko, are you going to try to do empathy with him and see what he's really thinking? 
Now seek a sigh and relief as they continue the explanation. We just caught one of those terrorists. I know we're pretty badass for high schoolers, aren't we? You caught one? You kids did? Yeah, we're better. Uh, but the, he might have just been a diversion. Hmm. Oh, in that case, we can't rest yet, can we? But we at Labo have the strictest security in the entire city. Terrorists couldn't target us even if they tried. No, I highly doubt they can crush our security that easily. But it wouldn't hurt to be alert. Uh, I'd yeah, he just I I uh I don't I uh, are any of y'all gonna try to use empathy on him? I'll believe that. Hmm, indeed. It would be disastrous in the off chance that they did manage to take over the facility. So in that case. Yeah, you are looking even more sus. Okay. I'll talk to the security staff and get them to strengthen security even further. Okay, please do! Are y'all gonna try to empathize? Lashiro and Akita smiled at each other. Okay, good! Yes, Natsuko, go! On the other hand, Natsuko secretly focuses his mind. Sorry, Mr. Akita. It's not like I don't trust you, but... He decided to read Yukita's mind just to make sure it looks like he did with you. Yes! Alright, we'll see. Did he search for Yukita's brain waveform and identified him as type 1? He continued and focused on the desire to know what was on his mind. Please, Mr. Okita, open your heart to me! The moment that thought Nazi crossed Nazika's mind, he heard a voice echo in his head. Huh, so we might. <gasps> oh! I can't get these kids involved too. I knew it! I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! What did I say? Vindicated! Fucking vindicated! But there's no time. I need to act now. <laughs> oh, crap, baskets. Natsuko had gradually gotten used to it by his third attempt. He successfully used empathy. Oh, my God. I called it, you guys! Now do you believe me? And above all else, Akita was thankfully opening his heart to them. Seriously, that's a dumb thing to do. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Okita. I'm glad we consulted with you. Oh my god, I gotta read Mr. Baldock's comment. Okita in his mind. No matter what happens, I need to make sure I duck the blame and find a way to pin everything on someone that isn't me while also being a major pain in the ass. <laughs> I knew it! I fucking knew it! Y'all didn't believe me! Vindicated! No, no, I only did what was natural. I have an obligation to fulfill as a member of Lavo. <laughs> but no matter what happens, promise me you kids won't put yourselves in danger. The kids felt that having him as an ally would be big support. Oh god. Natsuhiko! Natsuhiko! Aren't you gonna share what you just learned? Oh god. Saw so you obediently listen to Akita's words. Oh god! 
Natsuhiko, you should be more shocked. Okay, then. I shall be heading back to Labo now. I apologize, but we'll have to part here. Time to strengthen security. <laughs> okay, please do. <laughs> yeah, Alice. With Natsuko and Alice's voice at his back. At his back. Ukita returned to his car. He then drove back towards Lavo. But as he watched the car dry off, Salyu muttered quickly. Oh yeah, but that was said so suspiciously. Jeez. Seriously. I don't understand what's on people, other people's minds. Yeah, Salyu was confused by his reaction. Huh? What happened? Because it's a weasel. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? Well, there's something I want to ask you two. Thank you, Salyu! Thank you! Did you notice anything suspicious about Keiji Okita's speech and conduct? Huh? Suspicious? An unpleasant premonition quickly spread among them. Yes! Saw you petted Alice and continued. Yep. When I said anything suspicious, I was referring to the reason Alice cried out like that. Yep. Yep. Fucking called it! That kyan kyan cry indicates when someone's blustered. Thank you, Salyu. Thank you. Why would he be blustered? <laughs> huh? Natsuko and Mashiro gasped at that word. Just a minute. Accepted. Oh, oh wait. Oh, what do you mean by flustered? So I didn't see that. He didn't look that way to me. God damn it, Natsuko! What you think for two seconds? Alice was. Human is a perception of the appearance of the physical Yes, Jace, it's clearly a tanuki. It's not a ferret or a weasel, of course. As Takashi would say, it's definitely a tanuki. Alice can detect nuanced changes in facial expression. They may be difficult for humans to detect. Subtle indicators such as sweat, muscle tension, and shivering. If her analysis is correct, then he was blustered. But I do not understand the reason why. No way, huh? Which is it? Is Mr. Okita a victim or an aggressor? As he pondered, Natsuko suddenly realized something. Something bizarre about what he had heard in Okita's mental voice. Thank you! I can't get these kids involved too. But there's no time. Need to act now. There's no time. Natsuko had been quite relieved to find that Okita's heart was open, but the more he thought about it, the stranger it seemed. Why would Okita think there's no time just from healing during Salyu's conjecture? Because the terrorist guy got captured. Alice can detect when people are dubbing people in an over-the-top evil villain voice. <laughs> oh, yes, jeez. Hold on a second. Could Mr. Okita be evil? That wasn't all that was strange. I 
can't get these kids involved too. Could be taken away that he might already gotten other people involved. <laughs> There's two possibilities. Uh, the Mr. Okito really felt the gravity of the terrorist threat. Oh, Mr. Okito's with the terrorists! I thought that we had caught on to the plan! Natsuko's heart pounded. Exactly. Q uses sleeper Q uses sleeper agents. Is Mr. Okita the sleeper agent in that Lavo terrorist plot? Oh crap. Let's chase after Mr. Okita for now. Uh, yeah. There's no time for Natsuko to dwell upon us unpleasant memories. The kids ran off in the direction they had seen Okita leave. Only one road led to Lavo. Lavo Private Highway, the entrance at an expression gate where all cars are checked. I'm just waiting for the screen to, to get off blank. The facility was equipped with a nuclear reactor. That level of security was only to be expected. And at the entrance, yep. They're gonna spend the whole night here, aren't they? They're never gonna go back home. Natsuko, Master, and Sally were caught at the checkpoint as well. Okay, you guys. Oh my god! Ah! Alright, yeah, it looks like I think they're gonna spend the whole night here or some shit. Cause, uh. Wow! Oh my god, this is getting really exciting! I can't wait to continue! Oh my god. I knew Kido was evil! I fucking knew it! <laughs> We're like, oh, defending him and shit. I fucking knew it. It happens every single game. All right, you guys. That was awesome. Seriously, learning a lot more about the world. Like, a little really too close to our world for comfort. And just about the town and everything. And they're really getting towards the climactic confrontation. It's crazy that they haven't seen uh, the other two uh, dudes. As well as like, and also the freaking white haired girl. What the fuck is up with her? Like, who hasn't even shown up even once. Like, what? The, the one that was shot like, in, in, Rude, in Rude A. Like, I thought she'd be a major character here, but she hasn't even shown up a single time. Alright, you guys. Uh, we will continue Trails in the Sky on Thursday and continue this on Friday. So until then, I will say, so long, farewell, I'm weird as saying goodnight. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.